Hello everybody, it's Jay Brayton here with another episode of Dominions 5. This is turn 22, I believe. Um, right, the basic plan this turn is to go into Pythium with a bunch of troops. Hopefully, at the very least, clear its um, province defence. That would be the, the first objective. <laughs> and, um, and see where we go from there. So, the way I'm trying to do this is um, splitting up the crossbowmen into as many... Um, formations as is reasonable to try and maximize the um, number of potential targets they hit and additionally, in fact I could probably increase that even a little bit more um, and additionally we are going to bring in Gift of Flight onto hopefully at least um, to help provide us with an edge by um, going straight after the commanders if, um, if Pythium decides to um, patrol this turn. So, because of the fact they have misfortune, they're unlikely to get any like luck events um, that grant them a bunch of gold. But um, nevertheless, um, I'm quite interested in taking, at the very least, taking out the PD and leaving um, before attacking again, and ideally just being able to take this and then. Um, uh, you know, basically cutting down on cutting down their forces. So over here in um, Silverum, uh, in fact, maybe maybe Lautzer can can go down here and basically follow up with the second wave of troops. Um, up here, we are moving some of our cavalry back that were off the border this turn. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, Utgard is currently eating Elm's lunch and. Um, Obviously, ideally, that that doesn't want to be happening. So, I would assume they're going to move out of range of light into Nern or um, into Elm rather. With this stuff, this stuff in Silver Woods may well move, um, and so the you know the arrival of uh, a bunch of horsemen bent on destroying their palisades is going to um, going to inconvenience them and convenience us by contrast. Now over here. This guy is back forging Alquils. Um, we have uh, searchers moving out into various provinces. Um, Shuguan is probably going to go here instead of uh, up there, on the basis that we've got mostly the same paths on the two mages. I know air is a little bit different, but um, it's not it's not hyper different. Now this province hasn't been searched at all, so theoretically it could um, could contain some really nice stuff. It's already got one site in it. So um, the chance of additional stuff is slightly reduced, but because it's a uh, mountains province, it's um, it's going to have more than the standard allotment at least. Right as to next steps, so we have palisades going up here. As I said, I think hopefully last turn soon-ish, we can stop focusing on building new infrastructure instead on developing the provinces that we have and. Um, you know, just generally taking care to uh, to get things straight. But I'm going to have Boneheart, instead of researching with Nalquil, we'll have them cast Dark Knowledge for a mere three gems at uh, Forbidden Fields. See if we can find anything there in the waste. Um, mercenary wise, I'm bidding um, Fordo Boggets and the Bandar Band over in Silverum um, to potentially, um, you know, get in on the action over here. Uh, it's plausible that um, the Angercocks are going to sail over here uh, and into here, and if they do, we may end up having to fight against LA Atlantis because I'm um, not super interested in letting them just get a bunch of extra land. When it comes to fighting Upguard, um, I think realistically anyone we fight at this point is going to want a coalition to do it. Uh, other than maybe Jomon, I think we could probably probably beat up Jomon. Um, Katis as well is seems fairly bite sized um, but uh, yeah, this stuff over here. These guys did it right. Um, this stuff over here is going to be a little bit problematic. Again, we could probably fight. Um, could probably fight Abyssia. Our troops match up relatively well, and um, they're a relatively new player, I believe. So I 
wouldn't expect any particularly fancy tricks out of them, but um, you know, conflict is always a little bit dangerous in Dominions, so yeah, just have to be a bit prepared. Getting another ancestor guide out of here, getting a celestial master out of here. I might go more into air magic than I was originally thinking, um, just because it's a relatively good counter to Abyssia. And we actually have a relatively good income of 6 per turn. Uh, and for LA, that's um, that's kind of a reasonable mid game title, and we're still in the early mid game with a lot of stuff unsearched as yet. Um, I think I'm just going to call it there. I'm just going to check the orders on stuff here. So, oh, hold on attack, hold on attack. So these guys are in the back, just in case um, Pangai gets cheeky, basically, and uh, decides to attack rear. These guys being in a line is probably okay. If that line's probably not unwise on, on everything that can, um, just because I would anticipate sometime soon um, the forces of Pythium like actually patrolling, which is going to mean that we end up fighting not just this stuff, which is going to be easy, but also a bunch of um, uh, shade beasts and so on. Which, I mean, they're not super powerful combatants by any means, but um, they are ethereal, so they're going to be a little bit annoying to fight compared to everything else. Now, if we get our um, national hero with um, fire, that'd be really convenient at this point because we haven't got any heroes yet, and we've uh, we've had like three for what twenty some turns. Um, that would be great. I would just immediately fly them over and uh, we'd flaming arrows definitely to, uh, to try and help deal with the enemy force. So yeah, see you next turn um, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Take care and goodbye. Hello everybody, it's Jay Breeton here with turn 23 of the Games LATC. So we're creating more revenants. Uh, we searched this in death and didn't find a solitary site. So I'll get these guys researching. It also comes to my attention that I managed to leave off giving this guy an owl quill when I was, um, or or anyone rather, an owl quill while I was doing a sound check on the last test. But there you go. Right. So we went in and we beat Pythium, which is great. So Pythium, we lost 17 barbarian heavy horse and some um, crossbowmen, heavy cav, of course. But um, yeah, he instead of attacking or patrolling with the Shade Beast, he's just gone into this province here. So Biakus Canis is the um, uh, leader of the um, the undead forces for the uh, Death Cult. These are what Shade Beasts look like. They're um, relatively good combatants. I mean, they're not super, but they're relatively good. Um, they're ethereal, which is the main problem there. Their actual stats aren't great, and they have a reanimating bite, which causes people to arise as soulless beings, I believe 50% of the time. Um, they're pretty good. In fact, maybe more than 50. Let's have a check. I don't ordinarily watch battles, but um, let's do this. One. Um, well, we can count it, can't we? So that's what? One, two, three, four. Six. How many do they fight? Six. Okay, so there we go. It's 100% of the time. Um, <clears throat> right, as to the rest of our stuff. So it looks like uh, Pangai is moving into here. Um, I don't really want to fight them over this bullshit palisade, but we're probably going to have to. Um, so yeah. So let's get as many these guys as possible actually protected. And we will go from there. So let's get fully thundering over the steps just claiming the throne of ascension. Um, we're gonna move these guys in, there's no question about it at this point I don't think. Dogmeat General there. Have these guys on a line in the back. Uh, how many actual troops do we have at this point? Because this is looking a little more meager than I was hoping, maybe, if I'm being honest with you. Um. I think we match relatively well against um, 
central cataracts on a on a 1v1 basis so we should be okay there the risk is from the harpies um, really more than the more than the centaurs now they've brought along some centaur sages so we can anticipate stuff like luck and body ethereal being cast on their um, on their troops but um, I don't know I think we do need to just go for it and if we lose the battle then so be it um, because at the end of the day we do need additional provinces and we need for in fact we could probably just go straight into power I don't know why I'm panicking about this we could just go into pan and, uh, and do them so they've got an immense in their capital um, who is a perfectly reasonable PG there's nothing really more to say about that but um so yeah, they said I've got an immensal as their PG, so we're not at risk of any like weird super combatant coming out of the woodwork and just crushing us. Uh, you know, it's not a dracon or anything. So um, yeah, oh, I don't know. It's one of those, isn't it? It's uh, it's quite a tempting fight. What do we have in here then? So we've got that's part of fifty cav. These guys who aren't super great but they're okay um, now what is she going to cast let's get a calling ancestors that's a fun thing she can do for us and us alone so yeah so when it comes to fighting Pangaea as LACC you want to not waste your time basically because Obviously, the more time they have, the more time they have to um, um, what am I trying to say? To to bust out all their um, dryads and so on, and uh, make it very inconvenient to attack them. Let's get a another ancestor guide out of here. They never really go out of fashion. And yeah, so we're claiming this this turn. We have got some guys uh, protecting Fully Thundering over the steps, so it shouldn't be an impossible fight, even if uh, they go into it. Rock Flesh is also bringing in some additional troops, so we'll get them in a line, hold an attack. This additional formation over here, attacking rear. So let's have a see of how this actually looks over in Pythium. Because if we've just lost the entire squad, then um, that's a little bit different to if the losses were fairly distributed. So these guys should be breaking any second, really. So, uh, okay, so I've got a fair old bundle of stuff. It's looking all right, guys. What can I say? It's not looking too bad. Now, to be fair, Limitan and I are nothing like as good in combat as comes to Sensei. Um, so it might be a case of moving off for one turn and then moving back in because. Um, move that down to six again uh, to try to um, maybe we'll leave one troop here basically to see see what they're up to because um, yeah as I was saying so the so with the PD down they're basically left with just their troops now left to patrol which means they can do less um, positive stuff. Leave one troop in there to make sure that it stays under siege even if they don't break siege this turn. Um, maybe have Guan Yin um, going in there. Or maybe not. I think we, if we're taking any troops I think we have to take all of them just to 
um, just to make it more more of a dead set even if they put the uh, PD numbers up in here um, you know that they will be successful when we fight them okay so it looks like we lost most at least of the troops that are on hold and attack rear so we'll get another few troops added to that squad um, and we'll go from there oh uh, probably we should have everyone fire archers um, and the reason for that is because he is guarding his Biaki Canus with Contentse and as we know those count as archers so um, they're going to be firing straight on his commander if he's left him with guard commander on uh, again fire archers on these guys uh, Lots himself needs to stay there in fact I'm going to rename him because he's that's not a very good name for him. Um, oh yeah, oh well. There we go. Um, right, so are these guys fighting? Are they not fighting? What the heck is going on, Katis? got two entire caves and they aren't doing anything. I'm going to check over here, see what the crack is. Because really you would you would hope, at least, that... Um, I love Obscura, the Hidden Master. I think we're going to have to get him. Um, yeah, you, you would hope, at least... That, in fact, why am I paying that much for a... Come on. Come on, JB. There we go. Um... Yeah, so y you would hope that Katis would be doing a bit more, but um, I guess they don't have the quickest start of any nations. Their their troops are like reasonably good. I'll oh, I'll shut them off a little bit. Their troops are reasonably good. Like everyone always says that Katis's troops are bad, or many people posit that they are bad. They're actually pretty okay. Um, they're just unspectacular. The Falconeers put out a lot of damage, and um, I mean the poison slingers make their forts absolutely horrible to attack is something that I think mainly affects people who know more about the game than um, than people who don't because it means that like for example M.A. Katis in particular their capital is going to be absolutely dire to attack because it's going to have loads and loads of dominion on it even if you attack it early uh, loads and loads of dominion on it so it's causing tons of disease all over the place and then when you do bust in not only do they almost certainly have enchantment 5 or 6 um, to help do Horde of Skeletons, Foul Apes, all the rest, um, but also these, these guys are just chilling on the walls and just absolutely murdering anything that stacks up on the gate. Horrible. Um, right, but yes, yeah, so his main, his, his main quote unquote good mage is this dude, the Sauromancer. Um, and they have absolutely sick magic. I don't know what more you can really say than that. Um, they're just really good. I mean, they they aren't three recruitment points like a Marshmaster and JBBM, which is two in the base game, but um, but they are pretty good. Uh, Reborn as well are um, yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They're they're not super, but they're not the worst. They are a little bit expensive for a search mage with like nine RP, but obviously once you get um. Uh, lanterns and so on, which you can. It's it's much more reasonable. Uh, I think the the main problem is when you have not very good research on nations without any research boosters. Like, um, you know, well, there's a f there's a few out there. Mo the monkeys in the vanilla game, especially, I would say, are badly done by this. And um, to some extent, at least, um, I would say, La Mictlan has some issues getting out decent research numbers. I mean, in theory, you could make imp familiars, but I don't think anyone really ever has um, as a way to boost their research. Right, let's have uh, these guys go over here. They've got a fair amount of patrollers, but as you can see, their actual cap PD is fairly weak. Um, okay. 
let's produce another couple of these dudes. We're basically just, as a reserve strategy, slapping up as many temples as we can um, to try and preach the enemy down. That's that's what's going on at the moment. So go over here, depending on how this goes, may even end up just sticking temples down. I mean, the only one that's going to be a real problem is this province. Um, obviously, even the capital only has three candles on it. This has only got three candles on it. Um, probably instead of searching we should just move this guy here and just get as many um, temples per next turn as is feasible um, what did this guy roll? okay he rolled uh, he rolled okay let's, uh, let's search for this guy see if there's any air sites in here and the extra death path is going to be helpful for searching as well um, probably at least as helpful in the long term, as searching, as as researching rather with uh, 12 PD once, uh, 12 RP, pardon me, it's going to be. So, stone circles okay. Woodhenge druids are, um, they're not that fab for us. Have they increased the? Did they stat fix and increase the price of these? Maybe. I thought they used to be 110. Maybe I'm being wrong though. That's an absolutely insane amount of money for that. I mean, for the only real use for um, Woodhenge, in my opinion, is for Suramacia to um, uh, to grant them a way to cast tattoos um, for less than like 200 gold on their uh, warrior sorceresses. Now. Hmm. How are we going to do this? So we go in here, we go in here, take this out, take this out. Um, so that's what, 40 of the guys? We saw about 110 or so, didn't we, last turn? I mean, consistently seeing around 100 odd. Um, probably just going to move. So build a bunch of temples up, move some priests down for in case um, these guys are on there. They've got 12 magic resistance, but um, 12 MR is going to be reduced down to 11 in this province for banishment purposes. And um, we can potentially knock out quite a lot of banishers. So I think that's probably the plan going forwards. Now over here, we're going to keep producing... Actually, maybe we'll, maybe we'll just know we won't make 23 R crossbowmen. That's ridiculous. It's too dang much. So, yeah, no 23 R crossbowmen. Um, yes to 7 R crossbowmen. This guy's just chilling over here. Despite the fact that we're next to their pretender god. Um, well, we're not anymore, actually. Okay, despite the fact that their pretender god is somewhere around the region, um, our dominion's holding reasonably steady. Uh, it's not in a great way, but um, but it could be a lot worse, and our own provinces at least are relatively secure. We have quite a few temples up. Um, we will soon have even more. We're looking at, what, nine temples? Okay, so it's going to be dominion strength eight in a couple of turns. Um, and then we just pretty much backfill, 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 because Dominion pushing in Dominions 5 has never been easier since they made the change to additional temples adding extra conflict bonus. And um, the more provinces we can get securely under our own Dominion, the better. Um, our empire, I would say, is probably medium-sized. We are not the largest. I think that's pretty clearly going to be it. Oh, God. But um, nor are we the smallest, and so we just need to be careful about how we manage it at the moment. Um, that probably is the best location to get an ancestor smith out of. We don't intend to fight um, Abyssia for at least a couple of turns. Um, when we do, I think we're going to need to go in after construction 4, where we can get some stealth gear up and go in with... Um, uh, Mances, as expressed before, just to try and um, get a sneak attack off on as many of these provinces as possible, really. Because at that point, 
a lot of people just panic, straight up panic, and then you can go in with the rest of your horsemen and so on. That's a fairly kind of uh, step people's thing to do actually on, on reflection. I think that's probably how you've got to play the nation to uh, to get the most out of it. Is be sneaky, be aggressive, and, um, and make sure you win every single fight. And with that, I think I'm going to leave it. Oh, I guess, dang, Obscura the Hidden Master. Okay, let's get this guy then. Alright, just watching and have a good rest of the day. I think is yes, Just Mother Oak Cup. Um, yeah, and have a good one.